Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the course Mathematics and Statistics 1 pertaining to your first semester BTEC curriculum. First, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Sharmishta Ghosh, Professor of Mathematics from IM Kolkata. Now, this course comprises of five modules of which the fourth module deals with the topic sequence and series. You have been already introduced to the concept of sequence by Professor Shantur Das and I shall be continuing that idea to define infinite series. However, to define infinite series, we need to revisit once again the concept of sequence. So what is a sequence? From a layman's point of view, a sequence is just a list of numbers written in a specific order. Let us see once the mathematical definition also. So a sequence can be defined as a function f in whose domain is the set of all natural numbers. That means for every natural number n, we get a value of the function f in and this is what is actually termed as the members or the terms of the sequence, which is actually fn or very often we write it as an. And the sequence now will be denoted as an but written in curly braces or in an explicit form like this. That means we write the elements a1, a2, dots, an, again dots, written in curly braces. So an example of a sequence, here we have one a n where the nth element is given by n by n plus 2. n is varying from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So we can get the explicit form of the sequence if we put the values of n 1 by 1. So for n equal to 1, the first member of the sequence is 1 by 3. For n equal to 2, we get the second member as 2 by 4. The third member is obtained by putting n equal to 3, which gives us 3 by 5 and so on. Now, one thing we should remember at this point that sometimes the domain of the sequence is taken as not just the set of natural numbers, but the zero is also included. That means sometimes the sequence may start from A0 instead of A1. Now, a sequence, because it contains an infinite number of terms, the most obvious question that comes to our mind is what happens to the members of the sequence as n approaches infinity? How do they behave as we approach infinity? Now, this question is actually addressed by the concept of convergence or divergence of a sequence. And let us revisit these definitions once. So a convergent sequence is defined as a sequence for which the limit exists and is finite. That is limit a in n tends to infinity is a finite quantity. In other words, as n approaches infinity, the nth member a n approaches a finite number. Next comes the concept of divergent sequence. A sequence a n is said to be divergent if the limit of the sequence is not finite. That means limit a n is either plus infinity or minus infinity. Now there is a third classification which we call as an oscillatory sequence. And what is an oscillatory sequence? It is a sequence which is neither convergent nor divergent. That means actually that if there is no finite limit as well as no infinite limit, then the sequence is said to be oscillatory. Now with this pre-knowledge, we will now proceed to define infinite series. So let a n be a sequence, then the infinite sum, summation a n, n equal to 1 to infinity, that is a1 plus a2 plus dots plus a n plus dots, is called an infinite series or simply series. Thus, what do we observe? A series is nothing but 
the sum of the terms of a sequence. Let us see some examples. So the first example over here is 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus dots plus n square plus dots. So we see that the nth term is n square. So we can write this as summation n square n equal to 1 to infinity. The second example here is 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 and so on, which written in the summation notation is like this summation n equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n minus 1. You can easily check this as you will put the values of n as 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now this infinite series as it is an infinite sum or rather sum of an infinite number of terms, the next obvious question which arises to our mind is what will be that sum? Because we are adding an infinite number of terms, the sum is also infinite or it can be finite or anything else. So this concept is again addressed by the concept of convergence or divergence of a series. We will proceed to define that, but for that, we would like to define one more thing that is called sequence of partial sums. This concept will be needed to define the concept of convergence or divergence of a series. So what is this? Suppose that we are given with a series summation a in n equal to 1 to infinity and let us define now the following. Say s1 is equal to a1 that means the first term of the series. S2 is A1 plus A2, that means the sum of the first two terms of the series. S3 is A1 plus A2 plus A3. Similarly, Sn will be A1 plus A2 plus An, that is sum of the first n terms of the series. This Sn is called partial sum. And let us notice now that this terms S1, S2, S3, Sn, if we write them one by one, this will generate a sequence, which will be now gen denoted as Sn n equal to 1 to infinity. This sequence is called the sequence of partial sums. Now let us define convergence or divergence of a series. So a convergence series is defined as follows. A series summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n is said to be convergent and converges to L if the sequence Sn of partial sums is convergent and limit Sn n tends to infinity equal to L. So this means what? That means to define the convergence or to test the convergence of a series, firstly we would like to construct the sequence of partial sums and we have to test whether that sequence is convergent or not. If the sequence of partial sums is convergent and converges to a finite limit L, then we say that our series is also convergent. Similarly, we can guess what is a divergent series. A series will be said to be divergent if the sequence Sn of partial sums is divergent. That is, if limit Sn as n tends to infinity is plus infinity or minus infinity. And we have, of course, the third one, oscillatory series. A series is said to be oscillatory if the sequence of partial sums is also oscillatory. That means, as before, that the series will be oscillatory if it is neither a convergent series. That means it neither has a finite sum nor a divergent series, that means it doesn't also have an unique infinite sum. Now, let us see an example to understand these concepts. So we have a problem over here that determine whether the series 1 by 1 into 2 plus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 1 by 3 into 4, it continues the nth term is 1 by n into n plus 1 plus dots converges or diverges. So how we will proceed? We can 
easily understand from the definition that first we will need to construct the sequence of partial sums Sn and then we will test the convergence of that sequence. So let us write down first the partial sum Sn. So we know that Sn is the sum of the first n terms. So the first term is 1 by 1 into 2. Second one is 1 by 2 into 3. It continues. The nth term here is 1 by n into n plus 1. How do we add these terms? For that, let us notice that this 1 by 1 into 2, we can easily write as 1 minus half. The second term can be written as half minus 1 third because this, if you simplify, you will get 1 by 6 or 1 by 2 into 3. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the next term is 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4. It continues and the nth term 1 by n into n plus 1 can be written as 1 by n minus 1 by n plus 1. So if we now add up the terms, we can easily notice that these terms over here minus half and plus half cancels, minus 1 third and plus 1 third cancels. So it continues like this. So what is the final answer? We will be left with the first term 1 and the last term minus 1 by n plus 1. And now what is the next step? We have to take the limit of Sn as n tends to infinity. So what is that? See that now limit Sn n tends to infinity will be 1 because your Sn was 1 minus 1 by n plus 1. And as n tends to infinity, obviously this term tends to 0. So your limit of the sequence of partial sums is 1. So that means your sequence of partial sums is convergent and hence the given series is also convergent and converges to 1. In fact, we can say that the sum of the series is 1. With this, we will close today's session. We will continue with some more examples in the next session. So thank you and goodbye till then.